Alright, I'm going to do a quick tutorial here on chair structures. So on chairs. I'm going to kind of divide it into different parts. The first part is just basically drawing them. Do we know how to draw them? In the second part, I'm going to talk about two different positions on chair structures, axial and equatorial. Right, and how that relates to being on the top or the bottom of these chair structures. The third part, we're going to work on ring flips. So essentially going from one chair structure to another, right, doing a ring flip. And finally, the fourth part, we're going to work on going from a cyclohexane and transforming that into a chair. And also the reverse of that, taking a chair and transforming that into a cyclohexane with wedges and hatches as needed. All right, so that's the that's that's the battle plan here. So let's put that little outline there in the top corner. The first thing we're going to do is just drawing chairs. So we're just going to practice. So first, you need parallel line, parallel line, parallel line. Parallel line, parallel line, parallel line. That's a chair. You gotta be able to draw it the other way as well. Two parallel lines, parallel line, parallel line, parallel line, parallel line. So there you have your chairs. The other thing you like to do, I like to do is number my carbons. One, two. Well, actually, I'm gonna take this step back. I'm not gonna number them this time. So hopefully, you know, this is going to take lots and lots of practice, right? Lots and lots of practice, right? Do it again. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel line. Not that pretty. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel. Parallel. Right. Practice, practice, practice. So uh, that's a drawing, you know, basic part of it. You have to practice doing that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are what are these axial and equatorial? What does that mean? So these positions on this chair is matter. Right? This chair is a three-dimensional structure, right? Really, these are three-dimensional structures of a cyclohexane ring. But we know in the ring, an H can be pointed up or an H can be pointed down. So what's that look like when we all of a sudden are in a chair conformation? So let's say if I take this carbon right here, and I make this carbon here, that top part, this carbon right here, let's see what that looks like. So what is where the H is going to be? Remember, this carbon is sp3 hybridized, right? All these carbons are sp3 hybridized. That means a tetrahedral geometry. So the one position we're going to have is called axial, and that's going to be up. The other position we have is equatorial, and that's down. So if you have axial up, right, see it's kind of like straight up like a flagpole, that's axial. The other position on that carbon is going to be equatorial, and it's going to have to be down, right? So every carbon, every carbon has axial and equatorial positions, right? But axial can be both up or down, and equatorial can be both up or down, depends on which carbon you're on, right? So in this one, this is axial H is up. This is equatorial H is down. Now on the next carbon over, axial is now down, right? As you go from one carbon to the next, right, what was axial up on the carbon next to it, it has to have axial down. And then the equatorial, of course my equatorial position is going to be up. So that's equatorial up. Now as we go again, axial up equatorial down axial down equatorial up axial up equatorial down axial down there equatorial pointing up what I hope you've noticed is that axial and equatorial can be both up Right on the top part of the ring, right here's there's an there's an axial right here. These this axial, 
these three axials are all up. These axials down here are all down. Equatorial that's up. Equatorial that's up. Equatorial that's up. So axial equatorial really are just the positions on the carbon. You can be both up or down with either one. But hopefully that shows right again. Lots and lots of practice filling these in, right? Drawing the chairs, filling them in, drawing them in. One good hint, right? You could divide this, right? Some people ask, well, how do I know which way to push the, ax the right axials make sense? I'll go up, but how do I know, like this carbon right here, how do I know this ax this equatorial goes to the left and not to the right, right? If it's on this carbon, right, you can kind of divide this. It needs to go to the left, whereas this one, right, is on the right hand side, so it needs to act needs to go equatorial to the right. So once you have this, that's all fine and good. How does that translate to a possible ring flip, right? So again, we have the rings have tops and they have bottoms, right? And they have axial equatorials. You can be axial and be on top, or you can be axial and be on the bottom. Same with equatorial. So how does that work with a ring flip? So now I'm going to actually go ahead and label. I'm going to circle a couple hydrogens in red. Right. I'm going to see how, where they end up. So first thing we're going to need to do, we're going to need to number these carbons. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's number these carbons. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're really going to be focusing on here carbon one and carbon five. Something that's axial up, right? This is axial and up. And this one is equatorial and down. And what are going to be the consequences of this when we do a ring flip? So let's take a look. So I like to draw this as a little curvy arrow and say flip. So the first thing you need to do is realize, well, where on my ring flip ring, right? Notice how this one's kind of leaning to the right, and now this one's leaning to the left, so it's a ring flip. What does that mean? Well, what happens here is carbon 1 gets pulled down, and carbon 4 gets pulled up, right? So this is like a chair, right? So this is like the head of the chair, this is the footrest. The chair, the head of the chair becomes the footrest, and the footrest becomes the head of the chair, right? So here's carbon 1, right? Now it's the footrest, where it was the head of the chair. Here's the footrest carbon four, and now it's the head. And you go ahead and number accordingly once you've figured those out. So carbon one then is here. This is two, three, four is the top of the chair now, five, and six. Now remember, if we're up, we're always up. Right? If you're up, you are always up. If you're down, you are always down. That doesn't mean you're always axial or equatorial though. Up and top and bottom stay the same. Axial and equatorial change on ring flips. Axial and equatorial will change on the ring flip. So what was axial now becomes equatorial. So this is that H that was axial. It was axial, now it's equatorial. So now it's equatorial, but of course it's still up because that doesn't change. All right, and there's obviously the corresponding H that was equatorial here. Now it's axial down. I'm not going to fill in the rest of them just for ease of use here. So what was down here now for, oops, what was here was down, right, is on carbon 5. That's over here now. So that is down, it was equatorial, now it's going to have to be down, but it's going to have to be axial, right? So now it's down, but it's also axial. So the axial and equatorial can change, but the up and down cannot change, right? It cannot change. Good. So let's shrink that up a little bit. So we've done, we know how to draw them, we've practiced axial equatorial, we've practiced some ring flips. Now let's see how it translates to an actual problem. So let's draw one out here, where we have something that's there, something that's here. And the question then is, can we draw this into a 
chair. Alright, what's that going to look like? So again, practice drawing. Parallel line, parallel line, parallel line, parallel line, parallel line, parallel line. Not quite pretty, but close enough. I would number my carbons in this ring. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not going to really worry about any of the carbons besides one and three. That's where the stuff's at. I like to usually, I mean, just arbitrarily make the top right one my one because I'm used to using that one. So it's just easier for me to use. You can even go so far as to draw in right, the axial equatorial positions. So this would be carbon two, carbon three, four, five, and six. And I said we're only worried about one and two or one and three. So I would say, well, three also has has an axial up and has an equatorial down. So now I need to fill these in. I need to decide, right? Obviously on one, there's also an H that's down. And on three, there's an H that's up. So if I make that one, I like to think my chlorine's going up. So this is the actual position that's up. Good. So that means this other one is equatorial, that H. On carbon three, the bromine, I think, is pointing down. I just like to assume that the hatch means down. So I put the bromine in the equatorial position, which is down. And I put the H in the axial position, which is up. Now, once you have this translated, what if we took this and said, okay, let's do a ring flip with this. Right? Can you take that and do a ring flip? Right? So what's that going to look like? Well, let's draw it. So, flip. There. There. Parallel lines. Parallel lines. Parallel lines. Parallel lines. Right, so now again in our ring flip, carbon one gets pulled down, carbon four gets pulled up, right? Top of the chair, bottom of the chair, foot rest, new headrest. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, we're kinda of worried about one and two, or one and three. So one now has an axial down, equatorial up, three has an axial down, equatorial up. Good, right? Because of flipped. So what was axial, right? Again, this is axial. It's still up, but after ring flip, it's no longer axial. Now it's going to be equatorial. So that's where the chlorine goes, but it's still up. H is still down. The bromine was always down, so now it is down as well. It's just in a equatorial or an axial position, and the H is all up. Now it's just in an equatorial position. Taking this a step further. All right, so what the chair game has you practice is actually doing these ring flips in your mind, right? If you see something in the chair game that's axial, right, that's up, you need to recognize, well, now it's going to need, and the flip, it's going to be equatorial and up, right? So in the game, you'll see things that are equatorial, and you know it's going to have to be axial on the flip and on the same side, right? So if I saw this bromine, I said, whoa, this bromine's down. And it's equatorial. That means it's going to, have to be down and axial to flip. And that's what the game trains you to practice. You recognize is it axial or equatorial? Then it has to be the opposite after the flip, and it has to be, the, but it still has to be on the same side, top or bottom, right? I recognize this as axial, and recognize this as up. So that means I know it has to be up, but it's going to also have to be equatorial. If it's axial here after the flip, it's going to be equatorial. If it's equatorial here after the flip, it's going to be axial. But the side, top or bottom, always stays the same always stays the same. Final point to make here, one little thing to look at, what happens, which one of these is lower or higher in energy? So one of the things you want to think about is these axial interactions, right? So things don't want to be axial, right? The biggest things want to not be axial, right? You can imagine these axial positions, it's kind of crowded. These guys, these two elements can see each other, these bonds are interacting. So in this case, you have a, either an axial interaction between an H and a chlorine or an H and a bromine. And actually, the lower energy one wants to have the minimal amount, so bromine's bigger than chlorine, so it's better to have the bromine equatorial and away from all this stuff, right? Equatorial, like kind of the equator, it's away from stuff. So even though this is bad, right, H and chlorine is not good, H and Br is much worse because bromine's bigger, right? They're fine to they're more. That's the kind of final piece of this puzzle is think about which type of chair, right, at one flip or the other, which one's more stable and why. A lot of it has to do with these interactions, these diaxial interactions.